Okay, now that this bad boy is running good, uh, Phil, my buddy, told me that it stalls after a half an hour, and then he waits for a bit, and then he gets it going again, and then it stalls after 10 minutes. So that means I am just going to change out the coil on spec. You guys know what that means. I'm just going to take the coil. If it's a standard coil with no points, I don't know the year number to this thing. Thing? I just call it a thing? Well, let's just get some rags here. See if we can find the serial number anywhere. There it is. 97. Probably 1997. It's going to be electronic ignition. One. I'm going to change. I don't have a lot of Tecumseh stuff left. But Phil's a friend. And they get special treatment. So we got a half and a half and a half. And we take the cover off. That's tight. Good. Let's get those off of there. Are you guys still watching this magicalness? Okay. One. Two. I don't think. Remove this out of the way. Oh, that's it. That's cool. So do that. And we got to take that bolt off. That's actually the head bolt right there. And it's out. Tin. Right there, that dirty dog, eh? Be nice if I can get that cover off there without taking the bar out, eh? There it is. Whew! Okay. You got it. I'll leave that there. And there we go. That just might give me the suck. Yes! Yeah, yes! Ah, this is actually in fairly good shape. Good. Alright. That's not coming on. Now, the coil. Yes, it's a standard Tecumseh coil. 5 8 with a 5 8 holder on her. I'm going to change this coil and then we're going to monitor said situation. That's all there is to taking out a coil. I have quite a few coils. Well, that's the one beautiful thing about Tecumseh, my friends. Let me just turn this to there. Put that on there like that. Bring the magnets around. Oh, crash, crash, crash. And this, oh, you know what? While well, I've got this off, is it possible for me to run a new gas line through this? Boy, that would be nice, but it's it's actually quite a bit thicker than the old one, eh? 
I've, pull, I've used the old line to pull in the new line in. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty wonky for a fuel line, right? I'm not going to cut this until I get it. I think we're going to make it. I think we can make it with some lube. This isn't going to be pretty, you guys. Transmission fluid on a line, that shouldn't hurt it. Okay, now I might need a pair of needle molds to grab that from the other side. And if it works, we'll change the short piece too. And I, in the process I got the uh, fuel valve to shut off as well. Okay, where is that sucker? Right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we gotta pull it out a little bit. Did it, you guys? And I actually don't think the other one's that bad off. So, hey, 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 baby, you got to stop your evil ways, baby. We got the gas line in. We got the gas line working, yeah. Oh, good. Okay, I got to go to a bigger gas line clamp. Green, green gas line clamps. So I'm going to show you what I did there. I had to upgrade to one size of a gas clamp bigger. So that's coming out of the tank right there, Oops. right there, to, through the engine. Yes, to Cumpsies, the gas line goes through the engine. And I put on a new line. This one was fine. It's not in the weather or heat or anything like that. And uh, there we go. We got that on there. And now we just hook it up to the carburetor. And uh, we're good. We need a slicer. Be nice to get it all hooked up and she still runs good. Hope that works. Put the clamp on. So put the clamp in. And then we need our gas line pliers to put it onto the carburetor. Oh, nothing's easy, guys. If it was easy, everybody would do this. That's gonna work. Whew. A little too tight for my liking. Good. Let's turn the gas on and make sure we don't have a leak while I put this back together again. Alright my friends, I tried to change the coil on this on this uh, engine and it wouldn't run. It's firing through the carburetor which tells me that the, the coil is on backwards if you can believe that. So last time I really struggled to get this lid off of here so I'm going to just take the handlebars off and let them hang. There's one thing holding them on and that's this, this lever and we'll deal with that in a minute. This looks like it's going to be the easiest method to get this apart. That's going to make taking everything apart a lot easier. Goodness. 
All right, let's get that cover off of there. I know they're 7 16 and 3 8 Now we need a half inch to get those head bolts off of there. And as I was mentioning earlier, I don't like the fact that they hold stuff down with the head bolts. Okay. That's just part of the handle. So now this should pull off of here somewhat. It's coming off a little easier each time. There we go, baby. It's on correctly. But it might be the wrong coil. I'm upset about this. I'm upset that I've done something wrong. <laughs> it could just be the wrong coil. coil on. <clears throat> I almost want to go with the original coil. Button down the head gasket without all this other stuff and start it with a and start it with the with the drill just to see if I'm out in left field somewhere. Right? There we go. Now I'm going to put the head bolts back in. One, two, three. I'm in a hurry because I want this to work. Um, I'm thinking a thousand miles an hour right now. It's not a good thing. Are you ready? We have gas, we have choke. Let's just turn it over in a clockwise direction just to see. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Spark plug. Now it should be primed up nice. All right, guys. This was the wrong coil, but I have one that's labeled H50, and that's what this is. So I'm going to now turn it to this coil, not a lawnmower coil, okay? Okay, that one works, but it's got an open in it. It's got, when it gets hot, it quits. So now we're going to get Klaus's double ten thousandths because I just have a small when I take the flywheel to top dead center and I put the coil on it just it just touches. So I went with double the distance and it works. Okay. Yep, it's gonna this one's gonna fit. The other ones weren't really fit very well. about the uh, rubber boot until I get this running. I'm 
not happy about this, but I have a problem. We don't run. These kind of problems are no kind of fun. I have on the back of the, uh, this is a different but not new fuel shutoff valve. It leaks. The dirty dog, yeah. I like these. Although if I keep using it, it might not be leaking, but you can see it leaked in the in the evening, eh? Overnight. And sometimes if you this is called stroking them, like it's called it, like stroking a valve in a gas plant. You can open and close it 20 times and it'll stop leaking. Taps on the backyard too, water taps are the same. <clears throat> but I'm going to just test this one. I have one. I don't know if it's a wing wang or... I think it's a good one. I think it's a Honda. So, off. I'm going to pressure this up. But we got this thing. So this is a shutoff valve. This should pressure right up. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, let's just see if it flows first. There we go. Let's pressure it up. Let's take it to 20 pounds. Right? And we turn the valve. You guys are watching this, right? Good. Let's take it back up to 20. I have to hold stuff under my arms, right? Oh, see, I just leaned on the release. Let's lay it down. You guys can have a look at that. And I'll turn the gauge. There. <laughs> That's going to work. The only problem is, is i got to get it installed on the machine. So we need pliers. And I'm just going to pop this on the machine. It's just two gas, two gas clamps and a little bit of leakage. Right back, you guys. One more test start. I don't think it's tick ticklish. Got compression. Bow, chicken, wow, wow. Now we have to take the three head bolts off, put the hoosier on, put the cover on, put the thing on. And uh, there's one thing happening with the cover I'm not happy about. And it is. It's on this side. It's a little tin plate with a self tapping screw that is stripped. But I did hammer it back right here. I did hammer this back and flat. Seems to fit now. That's an old, that, that's kind of an old, just an old guy trick, right? Well, any mechanic trick, right? One more lady. So, you guys, uh, there's a gal in, in uh, the States. Her name is Lawnmower Lady. And uh, she, she's a good mechanic. And uh, sometimes she wears a different name on her coveralls every day like hi my name's not Steve but I fix lawnmowers it's really cute go to lawnmower lady and see if you can uh, subscribe like ring the bell all that stuff she's a she's a good mechanic and she has a sense of Ooh! she has a sense of humor too okay so now we're gonna put this bad boy back together again Oh, this has been a this has been a haul, you guys. Now, if we pump this, we should get water, air, yeah, water, gas leaking out of the car. We do. Look at that. That's a beautiful thing. Now, are we done here? We're turned off. Gas lines in. Let's just do a manual tighten of the coil. Oops, I'm reaching in front of you. Sorry. That's tighter than I can do it with my wrist. Now, one more small thing. 
I might bring this shutoff wire over top of the gas line so it doesn't get involved in the timing gear. So this is back when they made machines and this has the ring gear on it for the starter that mounts over here right there and they didn't put one on but they still put the ring gear on isn't that cool? Oh if they only did that now I could put an electric a DC electric start on my generator but no I think my pal Phil is going to be a happy guy. Oh, he is a happy guy. Okay, so we took that wire down in a groove. Twist the gas tank up. Just because, see, right here the, uh, the gas tank goes, the shroud goes under the gas tank and then the head bolt goes back on. And that's a complaint I've had with Tecumseh, although I like them since the beginning, right? If I had a hammer Bingo! right there. Don't run away. All right, you guys. Let's start this over. Well, it's starting over for me. 16.6666 foot-pounds. I'm going to go to 20. Wrong. <laughs> Here, I thought I was going to be a hero. Eh? But the half-inch ratchet was on my zapper. Okay. So, uh, we'll start here. We'll take it off first. Okay. I think the rest of them are loose. Muffler! Okay, let's just do them all here. Like I'll just go in a circle now, because I know I got them. Good. Oh, they're right here. Perfect. So we've got to put this muffler back on. Unfortunately, he goes right there with a bracket to hold our air box. Snowblowers have a lot of stuff on them, man. And I'm pretty used to them. If you live in the north, you just learn to do snowblowers because you learn to do snowblowers. crazy shoot on here. We had we found the bushing for this. Right here. So this goes underneath there, which goes over to there, which goes on to the other. Then we take another washer and another bolt and a lock washer for this guy. What do we got left? Just a couple of washers and our assembly pieces. Excellent. So when I put my torque wrenches away, I always turn this, take the pressure off the spring again. Eh? Are we good? Should we practice a start before we put the rest of this together? Choke. Squirt. Oh, we have to uh, turn the gas on, I believe. That should just fire, baby. Let's 
put the choke on. Nothing's going to get in the way. I might have to tie right back that back. It needs just a little bit of leaning out on the on the uh, idle jet. Third of a turn. Let's see if she starts up. Jump! Small danger is the uh, primer pipe melting on the muffler, and I might just tie her up it back like that. But I don't want it to wear on anything. It's done, and I cleaned it up. Doesn't it look nice? And by the way, I never mentioned it's made by Arians, right? Strange name, ST2 Plus 2 Deluxe 5. So I think it has an auger, an impeller, but no rear wheel drive. It's like a lawnmower, right? You push it, but it, it's aided along by the rubber paddles like I showed you. And uh, put new fuel lines on it. Put a new coil in it, because he said that it, uh, it uh, quit after a half an hour. That was actually quite a big job. And, uh, but now everything's back together, looking really good. And you know what? I know everybody loves the modern stuff with all the buttons and whistles, but look at how simple this is. And it's within reach of the operator, right? So let's just, I'm just going to put it on choke to see if it starts. And I've got the gas turned off, so we'll turn the gas on. And, and I'm not going to squirt the, the, the uh, Primer unless I need to. Well, okay. Oh, gotta turn it off.